Hey, what's up? Jason here with Unity3D.College. I had a good question come in about how to build a pickup system UI, something like this where you can look at an item, maybe you're walking around, and then hit a button to pick it up, have some progress, and you know maybe completely pick up the item. So I, I built this little system out, and I just want to show how it's put together, how you can use something like this. You'll probably change it up a bit for your actual project, but use something somewhat like this to, to go through the process of picking up items and showing them on the UI. So let's l see how this is all put together. Uh, the first thing I did was just import in the standard assets pack as a sample scene. So this first person, character first person script and uh, scene was already kind of created. So you could walk around, run around and jump. It's one of the free assets. And they're just search for standard assets on the asset store, pull it in and find that. The custom part is all about this UI element and these two scripts right here. So let's go over these kind of in detail. The first thing I have here is I just made a little canvas for the button image and this text. And underneath there, I made an image. The image is just a regular old Xbox button image that I downloaded online. Just grabbed the first one that I saw, it was an X button, and it worked perfectly. You wanna make sure that it does have transparency, whatever image you go with. Although you'll probably grab the image for your specific platform or platforms. Uh, the next thing under there is a child that's also an image. And this one is just a ring, so I'm going to click on it. And here you can see it's just a green circle. And I actually just made this myself in Photoshop. I took this blue one, chopped the edge off, turned it green, called it good, and then dropped that down as a child of this image. Now the way this image works, I've got the image type set to filled, and the default fill mode is radial 360. So you see as I slide this around, the image fill is happening automatically. So that's how we're getting that, that ring around there. We're not doing anything special, we're just modifying the fill amount on this image. And the final part here is just a text mesh pro text right above it for the item name. There's some default text in here. You'll never see that though, because in game we either turn it off or we fill in an item name there. Now you could also just use the default text, uh, the regular old text, but if you're doing anything with text in Unity, I always recommend Text Mesh Pro. And that's that's kind of the entirety of the UI. There's really nothing else to it. The button's not hooked up. It's not actually a button. It's just an indicator. Uh, there's no scripts on any of this, and that's the entire canvas. I want to keep it nice and simple. Now the cars, these cars both have an item script and they also have their layer set to an item layer. So to do this, I just went in and hit add layer, named it item, and then selected both cars and set them to that item layer. Now this item script, you're gonna be maybe surprised, it's totally empty, not doing anything in it right now. We could do something in it. Um, and in the thing, in a real project, we probably would. This would be some kind of an item that has some info about what the thing you're picking up is, what it does. Maybe it's a health pack item, and then it just restores health when you pick it up, or it's something that goes into an inventory system. I don't know. What, whatever works for your system. But here, I just made a blank script as kind of a placeholder. The work of this system right now is all done. It's on this rigid body FPS controller, and it's only this last script. So these other things, the first person controller, the capsule collider and all that, we're already there as part of the demo scene. Uh, we don't need to worry about those, they're just for moving around. The important part right here is this hold to pick up script. And you can see here it's got a camera reference. Uh, this is just referencing the main camera. You could also use camera.main, but it is kind of important to note that that does do a find object by tag, I believe it is, which is, pretty slow and you don't really want to do that every frame. So I've just put a reference right in here and assigned that. Uh, next thing we have is a layer mask, which is just a drop down where we can pick which layers we want to interact with. We can you know, add on a layer, remove a layer, just like this. And I really only want it set to item right now, but I like using this layer mask tool so I can just kind of pick layers and add and remove them, change them as I need. Uh, then we have a variable for pickup time. You can see there's tool tips on all of these as well. Uh, there's uh, another one for the image root. So if I click on this, you'll see this is going just to the base image. What's gonna happen is we're gonna turn this on and off based on whether or not we're looking at something. So if we're not looking at something, we essentially we're gonna just flip this game object off, and then when we are, we'll flip it back on. So that's gonna turn off the text and the child image as well, because they're children. And next we have the progress image. I'm gonna rename this to progress image. 
instead of image one. And that's the one where we're going to be filling in the, the amount or adjusting that fill amount. And then the final thing is the item name text, which just goes to this item name text right here. Just gonna replace that with car one or car two or whatever we have. So let's take a look at the actual code now and see how it's all put together. All right, first up here, we have all of those serialized fields with their tool tips. So see the camera, the layer mask, the pickup time, the image root, the progress image, and the name text. Uh, next we have two private fields. One is a item that is the item we're currently picking up. So this is gonna be set whenever we're looking at an item and it's kind of showing that text and showing the button, this will, this will be a reference to that item. And then we have a float for the current pickup timer elapsed. So this is how long we've been picking up. So you can tell, you know, when we go to two seconds, we wanna keep track of how long we've been holding until we get to two seconds, both so we know how to fill in that percent and so we know when to complete it and actually pick up the item. So the first thing we do in our update method is select an item to be picked up from array. So I'm gonna go right into that method and take a look at what this is doing. Um, number one, you'll see here on line 76, we're creating a ray with camera dot viewpoint or viewport point to ray. And I'm using vector 3.1 divided by two to give me a vector that's 0 0.5 on all three values. Uh, here I'm just doing a debug draw ray. You can kind of ignore that. It just shows the ray in the scene. Maybe I'll show that in a moment though. Um, and then on line 78, or now it's 79 because we needed some better spacing there, we have a hit info object and we're passing that as an out parameter to our physics.raycast call. This raycast call is going to shoot a ray right into the world, look for anything that is less than two meters away in the direction right in the center of my camera and on the correct layer. So remember that layer mask, that's a parameter that we pass into physics.raycast. In fact, if I go back and hit comma again, you should see it pop up. Which one is it? It's um, one of these. Oh, one, oh, I think it's actually overload number 10, right? Yeah, so number 10. So it's this overload that we're using where we pass an array, an out hit info and a max distance and then a layer mask. In fact, this this range right here could probably be a variable as well. So if we did hit something, so this is remember only going to happen if we hit something on the item layer because we're doing this layer mask check here. Uh, the first thing to do is check to find the actual item. So we look at the collider, get an item component. And we want to make sure that it actually is an item and it's not something that's just on the layer that we hit that doesn't have an item on it because if we do that, you know, we're going to run into problems. So here I just check to see that the hit item is not null. So we had an item on it. And um, if it is null, I guess this is the check to see if it is null. If it is null, we set the item being picked up to null. So th this, I'll show you again in a moment how this works. But the item being picked up is basically a reference to the item that our ray is right looking right at, the thing that the camera is looking at. In fact, let's just go back in. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show this side by side. I think I wanna really kind of drive this point home. So here we go, I'm going up and I'm looking right at this car. And now when I do that, the car is going to be the selected object. In fact, let's see if I can get into Unity. Uh, one issue with this, this pack, uh, this controller is that it constantly steals the mouse when you click into the uh, when you click into the game view, which is really really annoying because it's uh, you know, makes it tough to tab in and out. All right, so here you can see the ray with the debug ray actually shooting right in and hitting that car. And if I turn, you should see that the ray moves off. It's no longer hitting the collider for the car, and it disappears. So that, that's what's happening in this code. Now let's jump back to the code. So if the hit item is null, item being picked up was getting set back to null, but otherwise, so if hit item is not null and the hit item is not the item that's already being picked up, so this is only gonna get called if we're hitting a new item that's not the one being picked up. We set item being picked up to hit item and then we set the text right here to pick up plus the game object name. Now we could pull a property off of the um, the item and use that here for the text or something if you wanted to add in something like you know maybe it says like use health pack or whatever if you want to have a specific thing but for this I just kept it pretty generic and just pick up the object name now it's important to note that when we come through here and item being picked up as null this is also going to happen so if I'm not looking at something and then I look at something 
hit hit item will not be null and hit item will not match item being picked up because item being picked up would be null. Uh, the final thing that we have in this right here on line 96 is if the raycast doesn't hit anything, we just set the item being picked up back to null because we're not looking at anything. We didn't hit anything in that um, in that layer mask. In fact, this is much, much more likely to ever be called than this. This should only be called if we have something on the layer that's missing that item script. Okay, so let's jump back up to the update and take another look. Let's see the next part. So here you see we're selecting the item, kind of getting that into this item being picked up. Then we check to see if we have an item targeted. Have, an, have item targeted is really just if the item being picked up is not null. Nice and simple, just some extra wording there to make it obvious what we're doing. So if we have an item targeted, uh, the first thing we'll do is turn on that pickup image root. So if we jump back over here, the pickup image root, if I can get my mouse cursor back, which I probably can't, um, it's the image right there, right under the canvas. Now, we set that to active so that this thing turns on and we get the little UI with the button and the text. Remember, the text is already going to be set because it got modified when we did the select item being picked up from Ray. Um, and the reason that we're doing it in there, by the way, is only so that we're not doing it in this update every time. So we're really doing it when the item being picked up changed. And it could probably be a whole change handler. And a lot of this UI stuff could be split into a separate script, I think that just works on the uh, change of the state of this. In fact, I may do that later as kind of an add-on video to show how to build this system but architect it even cleaner. Um, let's see, where were we? So line 36. So here, once we've set the UI to true, we check to see if the player is pressing the fire one button. Now fire one is not gonna map to X, it'll map to A on an Xbox controller. You have to change that and use a different button or adjust your mappings. You know, make it line up with the correct button. There are a lot of tutorials on how to map an input to a button here, though. Uh, so anyway, we're checking to see if they're pressing fire one. And again, that also works with the left click. If they are, we call into this increment progress and try complete. If they're not, so if they've released the button, we just reset that current pickup timer elapsed and we're good. We don't really have to do much else. All right. Um, Let's take a look at increment pickup now. So if they're pressing the button or holding the button really is what it is. What we do is we increment the current pickup timer elapsed value by time.delta time, which is the time that's passed since the last frame, the last time this was called. And then if the elapsed time is greater than or equal to our pickup time, which right now is set to two seconds, we call move item to inventory. Now my move item to inventory doesn't really move it to an inventory. It just destroys the game object and sets the item being picked up to null. Now the last thing we do if they're looking at an item is update the pickup progress image. So in here, we just need to get the percent of time that has uh, elapsed. So we do the elapsed time divided by the pickup time. That'll give us a float between zero and one, assuming our numbers are not all wonky. Um, and then we set the fill amount to that percent. So this is just adjusting that slider up and down you know, just like doing it in the inspector, but it's making that fill amount kind of fill back up. Now, if we don't have an item targeted, what we do is pretty simple. We set the current pickup time relapse to zero and just make sure that our pickup image root object is not on so that UI kind of all disappears and hides. So again, this system all works. It's not bad. I think it kind of shows how you would build something like this and go pick up a car, it gets destroyed. Go over here, pick up another car, it gets destroyed. Um, it is important to make sure too that you have colliders on those cars. Just realized I hadn't really mentioned that. But like I said, um, the system, it works, it could be cleaner, but I think it kind of gets the, the idea across of how you would do something like that where you have this little fill up thing and you get a, um, an indicator when you're looking at an item that you want to interact with. In a bigger system, I would uh, make these items a little bit more generic, maybe make a system that's more of an interact system so I can go interact with an item, I can interact with a door, I can interact with you know any other thing in the world and have it do something with that same functionality and not have to rewrite or special case stuff. But I think that's a little bit beyond the scope of, of the basics of this UI part for now. So if you're interested in seeing a more complicated example like that, uh, please let me know. Just drop a comment below, and uh, I'll be happy to do that sometime soon. 
And if you have any questions, comments, or anything else, again, just drop a comment. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and all the fun stuff. All right, thanks.